Another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 138. I'm your host, Vince D'Alessandro, with Daniel Grom and John Renstrom. Howdy, boys. What's going on? How you guys doing? Oh, doing good. Doing good. Good. Before we get too deep in it, don't forget that this episode is brought to you by Mobile Tech RX, Hog Glue, Magnet Tech Matt, and Edgy Tools. Go and visit our website, pdrtooltime.com for an exclusive 15% off code that is on our website. And you could click right there from the website and you'll get it. And uh, the code is up there and everything. So click on that and buy some tools from Edgy Tools because they're freaking rock, right, guys? Especially the knocker. The ching. The knocker. I like the the new padded, uh, his new tap-down tip. Man, I'm doing tons of glue pulling. In fact, today... Here's some irony for y'all. I was glue pulling on a factory Ram 1500, ripped the paint off Uh the tailgate (laughs) using hog glue and a tequila tab. (laughs) Boom. I even broke one of the tequila tabs. Was it repainted? No, all factory paint. Uh, Then I turn around and I do an 07 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. This thing was creamed in 2010. It had a new roof, new quarter panel, new hood, uh, replaced the fenders, and most of the glass got busted out. This thing was in a devastating hailstorm. Uh, all the clear is peeling off of the hood and the roof. This The whole truck has been repainted. Not a single panel on it hadn't been painted. I glue pulled that entire vehicle and didn't pull any paint off of it. 70 dents. Now, that's strange. Now, when, you, when you pull the paint off that Dodge, were you slide hammering or lifting? Yes. Slide hammering. It was in a very bad location on the tailgate, and I had no choice but to glue pull. I mean, it was an oversized, super, super sharp. Was there, was there any paint uh, damage? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. No. Was it compromised, like a hairline crack no. that you could see or anything I have like ab- that? I have absolutely no reason why this paint pulled on this thing. Now, which tabs, the tequila tabs, were you using? The smooth ones, the fin- the new fingerprint ones? or The or- smooth ones. I haven't had a chance to get a hold and uh, break in some of the new fingerprints. I finally got those so. fingerprints. I, I'm putting them to the test, and I don't have anything to report just yet, but uh, they are looking good. They're looking like a good tab. But I will say, I broke the same number of black ice, Kiko black ice, as I have tequila tabs doing just gnarly, gnarly. I, I've been pushing the envelope a lot yeah. on my glue pulling lately. And uh, it's it's when you break a tab, always look look inside the, the part you broke and see if there's any air bubbles. Because that seems to be the problem is... You think that's, that's the weak spot? The air bubble? Well, there, there's sometimes there gets an air bubble in there, and that's what makes it. I don't weird. notice it on either the black ice or the tequila. I mean, the root beer was infamous for that. Yeah. But the uh, black ice and the, are the, uh, yeah, black ice and the tequilas, I don't really notice it. It dude, just seems to be a clean break. But, dude, they pull hard when it breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's my favorite part. Over tab weld with hog glue, I hit the hog glue with a little bit of alcohol, and it comes right off. Huh. With tab weld. Uh, I have to get a frame rack clamp and a tow truck <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, torch it, heat it, you know, uh, hog glue. You just hit it with the alcohol and the, the release comes yeah, off. That is nice. That it comes off so clean. Yeah. 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 You know, I was using, faster. what was I using the other day? I, no other tabs were working and I ended up pulling out root beers again and root beer saved the day. So I still keep an arsenal of root beer tabs handy for, for those things. And even if they break, it's okay. You know what? It's the last draw I, I have to get this yeah. done out and they still the way they snap and uh, maybe it's the way they break i don't know but could be i have five different tab styles that i i keep i keep three of each i keep the uh, black ice the tequila the white compression uh gangrene and the root beers and they stay right there and i just reach in and out of the bin and grab them and if one doesn't hook up i grab one of the others and one of them's a guarantee hookup now do you have any of the bloody orange i have used them um i just i'm having really good luck with those and that's that's kind of 
what I've used on this hail car. And um, I really got to put those to the test and they work fantastic. And what I like about them is their sizes. They're, they're just like one size different than all the other tabs, which I really like. And it seems to kind of fit the bill if you're doing hail. They seems. also have oval ones, too. Yeah, the little oval ones are great. Yeah. Now, yeah. those uh, are the ones that I use the most. And I have one of those that stays in my oddball size tab collection. Now, I uh, believe they make two different types. They make a, a smooth one and a textured, which is just lines. Yeah. Uh, I, I've used both. And another tab that, that surprises me quite a bit that I, I've actually been grabbing over Gang Green has been uh, the Burrow, the Burrow Green tabs. That nine millimeter and what's the big what's the size just above nine? Twelve, is it? I think they're doing a twelve, yeah. Yeah, that thing's badass, man. Yeah. I mean the the, the plastic that it's made out of, it's it's really good. It's taut. It, there's not a lot of flex in it. I know Daniel, you like flex when it comes to some of those tabs. Yep. But you get a good pull on it. You know, but one of the things I, I really got to do is use that lift right and I've, this is what I've got to say about the lift right. If you're a door dinger, I don't think you need the lift right, to be honest with you. If you're a hail tech, absolutely. If you're doing the roof, I mean, that was a must-have tool, in my opinion. Really? Yeah. It, I mean, I was I was kind of low on the on the roof, so I can really take a plain look at it. And with your hand position... I mean, you'd be awkward as hell trying to get the, the mini lifter okay. to work. And yeah. I was loving it. I mean, for sure. But if you're a door dinger, um, I, I, I don't see a big uh, reason to have it um, unless you do hail every once in a while. But for mm-hmm. hail guys, I think it's an absolute must. I agree with you. It's a, do you have it yet, John, or no? No, no. Okay. You're going to like it. You're Flat out, you're going to like it. Uh, my only issue with that lift, right. Uh, I used, I've been using it on rails and on roofs and I'm not, I'm, I'm a door dinger, but I also have a retail location that I'm, I get a lot of dents referred to me by other PDR guys in my neighborhood, uh, because none of them want a glue pole. It's very, it's the most bizarre thing. I get so many referrals from three specific dent guys that will not glue pole and will not work on roofs, hood roofs, uh, roofs and trunks. They won't work on. And they w- wow. definitely won't work on rails. So it's a little side gig I have going on in the PDR community out here in Southern California. It's kind of cool. Uh, but like you said, Daniel, it's very comfortable in the hand. Uh, my only issue is, and I think it's me personally because I have so many issues with my wrists, is that it sends a shockwave up my wrist that I don't really, uh, I don't really care for just yet. But I am going to dampen it. Is it just the way the handle snaps when, uh, when the tab pops free? Yeah, it's the handle hits. It hits. Well, yeah, I guess it's a very consistent hit, and it's freaking awesome because every single tab you put there, you'll get the same pull every single time, which okay. is nice. Uh, but however, sometimes, not sometimes, every single time I pull it, it hits, and there's a reverberation that runs up the palm of my hand and up into my uh, my forearm a little bit, and it it bothers me. He's very sensitive. I'm sensitive. <laughs> I got yes. sensitive hands. Ah. I can't talk like but, that. Interesting. But the the thing is, I I one of the things I noticed with it is it doesn't have a long pull to it. So like on bigger tabs, I go to my other my Robo Lifter um, okay. because it does have a, a longer pull to it, um, and I think that's. That's why it makes it a great hail tool because yep. you're using smaller tabs and, and it just boom, 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 boom. And the feet on it and the way it pulls, it pulls straight up. Straight, it's straight. very, very consistent. Yeah. So you get very consistent pulls when you're doing the rails and the, and the roof. Um, it works really well for what, that. What you'll notice too with it, John, when, once you do get it, uh, you'll probably get the new version. Actually, it's not even a new version. He he made some modifications based on what people were telling him, and it's the same thing. John or uh, uh, Daniel and myself had told him it needs to be gnarled. You know, the the screw on the top mm. to tighten it and lower it. Uh, a lot of technicians wear gloves, and that would be really hard to to turn. Uh, it's the one I have is smooth, but the new batch that's coming out will be gnarled, and I believe he's working on a pass through as well that will be out 
uh, with the which as a hail guy, do you, do you prefer a pass through? No, because that launches my tabs even worse than right. I launch them already. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't think he's too quick to the gun to do that because that's probably the majority right there. But I know actually, I yeah. after using it on that hail car, I don't think he needs a pass through. Yeah, because it's really made for hail guys and right. And my the problem way with the pass throughs is I like the snatch and grab aspect of the the keeper. Yeah, pop and, and pull it to me. And that's a perfect description of it's even better with that design to snap, snatch and grab. Yeah. I noticed that, especially on the rails. Yeah. So you'll, you'll dig it. Now, yeah, sure. John, you mentioned, you mentioned the edgy knocker. Uh, I, I don't have that yet. I, I plan on uh, ordering it. Uh, a lot, I see a lot of guys talking about it. It's, is it that good? It was, uh, I screwed it on my blending hammer and it, just felt like I'd been using it for years right on the first first tap backs. Right. And uh, it's a little more precise. Um, I did read another review, and, and he kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, if you're doing a big wide area, you know, um, say like a, a big glue pole with the old uh, uh, oval tabs, uh, the big oval tabs, you're not – you can't tap that back. It's a, it's a more precise, smaller hit uh, than a big mushroom titanium head. Sure. Okay. It does. But I mean it's it is my go to. It's right on the end of my uh dent technology hammer and it is my go to for ninety percent of all of my blending work. Okay, I'm definitely gonna order one then to check it out. Yeah, I have one coming. I ordered that right away because I've been hearing guys talk about it and definitely gotta get it. Yeah. yeah. And then I've used his new now I can't remember the name of me. I need to pop it up here on his, it's his something website. perverted. Something perverted. <laughs> the new the new um cushioned tip the the new uh uh rounded tip head with the interchangeable cushions on the end for the different hardness of the cushions different chair rail tips and on it the nipples yeah uh, they're not yeah. called the nipples are they <laughs> i don't know <laughs> all right I'm, now that's it <laughs> they should have passed them <laughs> <laughs> but i've been using that for a lot of my uh tapping back on the big glue poles with the black tip on there. It seems to just work really great. I have my uh, uh, jackhammer with the mushroom, the red mushroom head from uh, Dentcraft, and that is my tap down hammer. I got rid of my old school Matco dead blow hammers. You'll be happy to hear that, Vince. Oh, good. And <laughs> So and now I'm just using my jackhammer with that tip, and then I ironically got the edgy tap down on the opposite side of that. Okay, you know I what? It's called the, the crown killer knockdown tip. Yep, the crown capsules. killer. Yes. Ha. You that, type faster than I do. Well, hell. So, yeah. but that crown killer, I I love it for tapping back those big glue poles. You know, you get that glue pole that kind of got out of out of hand a little bit when it popped off, and it hold a giant mountain and you got to get a Sherpa to get the tap down up to the top. <laughs> it seems to just drive it back smooth. Yeah. I just ordered his new, um, he's got a new hook, a new hanger that uses, um, Todd's, um, Todd Zimmerman's from carbon tech, his, uh, what is it? Nylon loop. Oh, so you can use the, the hail fire. rod on it. As kind of a hook, huh? And I'm excited to try that thing out. I now is that the on this hail car? Now is that the strap on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the strap on, <laughs> the strap on by Edgy. I Tools. love Dave. <laughs> Dave's a big pervert. And we love it's him. his wife. His wife names his stuff. It's not Dave. His wife's the pervert. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what he bl he blames it on her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. Secretly, well, hey, we've him. been talking a lot about glue pull in here, yeah, and that kind of leads us into. I finally got a chance to break out the Cam Auto Pro. Yes. I know a lot of guys have asked about it. Now, this is designed a lot more for collision, and what I had was a beat ass box side, a uh, huge dent on it. I actually took the body shop pull tower that uses the air over hydraulic ram. And hooked it up on this Cam Auto Pro. Now, for you, the, for all of you that are south, a box side is a bedside. So, okay, go ahead, John. <laughs> yeah, the pickup box side. This is on a Ram three quarter ton, short box, and whatever hit it, hit it. It was super deep, 
dead in the center of the wheel well. And I put that Cam Auto Pro in there and I put it on the pull tower and I gave gave it some a uh, couple hundred pounds worth of pressure and it helped. Now, did you use their glue? No, I was using the hog glue because I trusted the hog glue. Did it come and off? It, uh, <clears throat> what came off first? Actually, as long as I was using the complete Cam Auto kit, nothing came off. Really? I stopped the pull and alcoholed the glue off before okay. and that's why i used the hog glue because hog glue has a that longer setup time we've all discussed that yeah, uh, yeah. Times. so the cam auto it's slower it's not going to be like your kiko setup uh the kiko is a little bit faster the bridge everything else you know here i am i was literally using frame pulling equipment to pull this box side and test this cam auto pro to see how well it stuck and it i i did not want to put any more tension on it now, the Cam Auto Pros come in a couple of parts. So there's uh, the black loop that you hook to is a little bit smaller. And the only time I had it launched was if I only used that black hoop. I was trying to get the, a tight spot on the body line. And that is what you can't get. That That's not what you're going to find like in most of your Kiko, uh, any of the centipede setups. But I was able to finish. But, man, the strength and the pull, and I didn't do anything. I didn't soak the tabs. I pulled them out of the bin. Just as they came in the mail, yeah. Put the hog glue on it, stuck it on, and the body shop was absolutely blown away. They swore to God there was no way I could fix the box side. Well, now, I could have fixed the old school way, but the cam the cam Auto Pro really made it much faster. Sure. Now uh, I noticed I watched a video on the Cam Auto Pro, and the guy heated up the panel and he heated up the 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 tabs themselves before he placed okay. them on there. You didn't do any of that. You just nope, take it right out of the box. I didn't do anything. I pulled might have been it out doing of the that box. during winter, though. You know, yeah, that's you true too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cam Auto Pro comes out of Canada. Exactly. So, it's know, always cold up in Canada. Cold, <laughs> there you go. They, they all live but in no, igloos just, up in Canada, right? Yeah. No, that's a little further north. Oh, uh, damn it! You know where the the sun ne- never goes away. Yeah. But it, so for you guys that are doing the paintless collision repair, uh, definitely look into the Cam Auto Pro kit because. It, if you've got the well, big me, Kiko kit, this, this goes though. right with Kiko. Let me ask you this. Do you, do you think you could have gotten the same results using the Kiko or um, or the glue tracks system? Here's the big difference is um, the Kiko system is set to, to work on their bars. You know, whether you're using the bridge, you're using the leverage bar, anything like that. The Cam Auto Pro is designed to hook up to frame pulling equipment and pull yeah into it. so who the hell has so, frame pulling equipment around yeah none of us have that i i still have all my auto body stuff oh, and this geez. thing fell right into my world right yeah Big but you, you have a hustle stick yes of course yeah. i have a hustle stick. So you, that you, is you, you, you can use question. a hustle stick on it right yeah because the hustle stick chain would go right into the cam auto pro loop yeah so uh, but ultimately for those of you that actually do those big smashes, and if you're running the Kiko, the Cam Auto should be added into your arsenal. But you're because between the use, lot of it, you're going to have to use the hustle stick on it. Because well, between the whole lot of it, but Cam Auto is coming up with their own little pulling tower that's supposed to be lightweight and uh, easy to maneuver. Oh, now did you guys ever see that? I I know I sent it to you, Vince. Uh, some guys, I, I want to say they're in Brazil, and they had a mini mini uh tower little pulling tower yeah that suction down to the the floor uh-huh somehow and so you didn't need any um anchors or anything like that in yeah. the cement and it was it was locking down and and it had a like a, a ratcheting like a, a a fence ratchet i guess okay so, yeah where you crank it you go do, 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 and you can crank it and they I were really like that. I yeah. Do that more. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that idea. I mean, I'd love to have something like that. Um, well, the big difference between using those uh, pull towers and using, say, the uh, whether you're using the monkey on a stick, the uh, the leverage bars, anything like that, is the consistent pull. 
Uh-huh. When you're using that pull tower, that tension stays. Sure. And that tension is on there. You're not doing anything. You get to step clean back. You get to find your crown. Yeah. You get to work the crowns a whole lot more. And then you can add a little bit more tension. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would it, probably a come along, right? You could exactly. You could you hook could, a come along to it, right? Yeah. If, for those in a steel building, one of the steel girder braces. Yeah. You could just hook a, a come along to one of those and. <laughs> Honestly, for what we're doing, we're not doing much more than a couple hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. No, and that's to the other day I had this trunk on an accord that the guy hit a mailbox and crunched in the whole thing from the taillight to the Honda emblem in the middle. And I'm like, okay, awesome. My opportunity. I knew it wasn't gonna come out perfect. He didn't want it perfect. He just wanted it straight to pass lease inspection. And I I, I finally brought out my Kiko. Uh, actually, it's the second or third time I've used my Kiko bridge system, and I actually use the, the glue tracks, or I'm sorry, the dent tracks for it. Mm-hmm. And instead of using, like in the past when I used it, I used the drill and attached a drill to it, but I needed a real controlled, you know, pull of it because I didn't want to overextend it. And we're talking something that was 18 inches long, right? So yeah. I could see this cam thing doing the same thing, and I think the difference between the cam opposed to uh, using like a dent tracks, uh, you know, a glue tab that's you know six inches long or whatever is it seems it's sectional. So you're only it pulling. Is. It's kind of like the cat uh, the caterpillar tab, but it's not attached to the one next to it. So you're kind of pulling yeah. individually and, use, and together at the same time. And the finger pullers, yeah, you can really manipulate which tabs you're pulling. Right. Right. Okay. So. Uh, you know, and that's and that all comes out of the the collision industry with the stud pullers and the wiggle wire. Exactly. Uh, and they've moved it into a glue, and I tell you, it works. Yeah, it works. Okay, well, good. So. That's good. Well, you're going to have to keep us posted on that. That Cam Auto Pro, it, it, it looks very promising, especially guys yeah. that have shops. Obviously, guys that are mobile, they're not using something. Yeah, it's like not going to be a mobile setup. You're going to want a shop. Yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna probably set yourself up a bay where you can do some pulling. Sure, and you know, for so. now we have the Kiko uh, bridge system. Bridge system oh, yeah. that's definitely this, you know it's, it's a not going to be a 100 percent replacement for the Kiko bridge system. All right. Honestly, actually, Kiko now sells the Cam Auto Pro on their website. Oh, if you're interesting. On Kiko's website. Um, Kiko's carrying it because it's oh, really? uh, hand in hand. They they're going to work great together. Cool, that's awesome. All right, let's shift gears and let's you know what? Let's touch base, Vince. Yes. On, uh, so we did a me and Vince went on uh, a guy uh, guys uh, podcast. You might know him. His name is um, Mike Mike Toledo. Yeah, yeah, but he spells it funny with a Y. Yeah, or he's he's. <laughs> Nobody really knows who this guy is anyway. Yeah. So we went on his podcast and we talked about Greg Van Winkle and his son, Devin. So let's give an update on where we're at with that whole thing. Sure. Okay. This is where we're at because this this episode is going to drop the day that the raffle is. So if you're listening to this early Tuesday morning, you're going to get an opportunity, to your final opportunity to be a part of it. Uh, right now we're recording this on Thursday. What's the date today? The 28th or something 27th thursday the 27th is right now and the fundraiser the goal was nine thousand we're already up to fourteen thousand six hundred and twenty seven dollars so uh get on there because you got a chance there's still tool companies hitting us up trying to uh help this young family this young man devin and uh and greg his father uh for those of you who have not listened or heard about it, you could go over and listen to Mike's podcast. But a brief summary is he, uh, he was in a, a altercation, which was unprovoked in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And he was, uh, he was rushed by a bunch of guys and they knocked him to the ground. They, uh, they hit him after he was unconscious. They broke his skull from temple to temple. And he was in ICU for seven years, seven years, seven days and almost died as, uh, the result of his injuries. Uh, he's now unable to focus and work in the PDR industry for now while he heals. And so this fundraiser is specifically to raise funds to help him, uh, you know, get, help him with his bills and create a little bit of a cushion that he could uh, not feel the stress of a financial stress while he's recovering. Uh, and I actually, I um, texted uh, Greg today and I asked him how, 
uh, his son was doing and he is his attitude is greatly uplifted from the outpouring of support and love that that the PDR community has put out there for him so it's it's having a result um, this is your time to you know give back you know give a little back that's what's great about our industry is um, time to time that we'll come together as a community and and give back because you never know when you might need it now yeah yeah and greg is one of our uh, friends that we met at mte we've met devin i've sat down and talked to devin for for an hour straight these guys are a, a really good kid. He's 22 years old. They're, they're the salt of the earth type of people, and they would never in a lifetime ever reach out for help. They're very proud Southerners. Arkansas, Arkansas. Is that how you say that? <laughs> they're from Arkansas. Arkansas. And uh, they're yeah. very proud, and they don't reach out for help. So, I mean, they're blown away by the support of our community. So this is our, your last chance. This raffle will be going off at 530 on Tuesday, the Pacific Standard Time, uh, which is coincidentally and we did not plan this it's his birthday it's so let's oh, give really? him a happy birthday yeah, it's Devin's yeah. birthday oh, yeah. on tuesday yeah i think we're doing great when did we uh we posted everything what day before yesterday and we're already, already yeah. shot up to that amount yeah, we and- we shot right through the the goal, the goal. which was nine thousand. Yeah. yeah now we, as we soon didn't as we did our podcast we launched right through that we didn't start the gofundme uh it was a, a gentleman that's close to the family they started it, and it was I think it was hovering around three grand, four grand, or something like that. And once we decided to get involved and get the tool companies to, to donate and actually do this raffle, that's when it blew up. And uh, thanks wow. to everyone that has stepped up, all the tool companies. Yeah, uh, thanks. And Mike and uh, John Hiley for advertising it. Those guys are come across a lot of people. And Ryan Hampton. Ryan Hampton started the whole yeah. uh, movement whole himself. Thing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a beautiful come together for a, a wonderful family. So I appreciate everyone that has stepped up and done something. Yeah, yeah. you guys rock. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. This is the first time we've ever done this, me, me and Vince. Yeah, John, have you like, done something like this before or no? No, no, this is this is definitely the biggest. And, and I mean, we've participated in several things as Mobile Tech RX um, and helped out a lot. But no, the way we we kind of put this together off a quick meeting the other night and yeah and uh launched it out the next day and then it just blew up and I took know. off and we we sat there for what maybe half hour on uh, half hour 45 minutes put it all yeah. together and threw it up there yeah. uh i'm all three of us are going to be on at 5 30 so mark your calendars john and daniel 5 30 next tuesday we have to get on i'm sending you the list i'm going to need your help with random.org choosing you know the winners for all the raffles because there are a ton of prizes man and, and, I, and for all you guys out there, we're going to have uh, a naked woman choosing all the names. <laughs> so you'll definitely want to tune in for that. Okay. Of course. It, by woman, it could be subjective. Remember, Daniel's in California. True. So. <laughs> it might be a cartoon woman. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> I'm just trying to get them to tune in, man. Come on. Well, they're going to tune in because... You spoiled the whole thing. You know, right. I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you why they're going to tune in. They're going to tune in because 119 people so far have contributed in the last five days. That's so a lot of stuff. That's, that's, that's a lot of people that have, have uh, bought You're raffle tickets. You're something, man. You're almost guaranteed. The odds are, it's not like the lotto. I no, mean, exactly. you're going to win. You're going to win some. Yeah. I can't even con- uh, put together how many tools just yet because I haven't had the chance to sit down, but it's well over $10,000 worth of tools. And oh, yeah. So so you get to feel good, contribute, and you get something in return. Yes. yes. It's a win, yes. win, win, win. It is. All right. Let's shift gears again. Okay. Where are we going now? Oh, <laughs> how about the XL Yoast? Oh, Yeah. John, did you get one finally? I finally got mine. Oh, it was killing me, you guys. Everybody's posting up on Facebook. Oh, look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. All right. And I'm just sitting over here in little old Wyoming with my hood propped, rope ratcheting into a door. <laughs> I put that sucker to use on some beat, beat the doors these last couple days. So explain to the people that don't Perfect. know what we're talking about when we say Yoast XL. Go ahead and give a description of what we're talking All right, about. Your standard Where do you get it to? Jammer. Runs about six inches. 
the Yoast S, the Yoast XL runs that out there at a little bit closer to 10 or 11 inches. Yep. So when you're doing the beaten cars, like a standard door, you know, you just crack it open, hold it, lock it into place, you know, jack, crack, and, and back it back out, you know. Uh, but when you're doing the big beaten stuff and you're going in, you got the trim panel off, you're going in, that door needs to get held out a lot further. Especially if it's a truck and you got Nerf bars or running boards or something. Yeah. Anything along those lines, you just need that door out further. But I've been, actually, I haven't even used it. I've used it on a door a couple times, but I've been using it on uh, hoods and trunk lids. Yeah. That's right. I saw you'd post that on the trunk lid. That looked pretty slick. I'm going to have to give that a try. It's a little bit selective on the hood, though. It is a little bit selective. You have to finagle it a little bit on a hood. Well, it depends on the hood. Sure. But I I would just been thinking that man, I wonder if we can build a longer version of this. I should talk with somebody, and then all of a sudden it just starts popping up on Facebook, and then I finally got me one of them. And yep, it's worth it. It's worth the pennies. Yeah, it yep. just and it locks the door down. You know, it's it's just kind of like the B and D door jammer. It uh, is. It's made by B and D on steroids. Yeah, it's made yep. by B and D. It is is bigger. But that door doesn't move. There's no wiggle in the yeah. door. Dude, you, you could put that on a Lamborghini and go 220 miles an hour down a runway, and that door's not moving. It's like yeah. it's closed, yep. but it, it's open. It is, and, and it's locked tight. Yeah. And where can you buy this? Oh, yeah. You can get it from Anson Tools. Anson. You can only get it from Anson Tools. That's right. Yes. And it is, yeah, it's awesome. Loving it. Okay. Well, good. That's good. I'm glad you finally got one. We, I, I use mine on a daily basis now. Uh, I'm having a hard time using the regular one. So, yeah. you know what I'm doing now is I, I have one for my mobile and one for the shop. <laughs> so, because uh, no, normally I don't do big smashes anymore. Mobile, it has to come to my shop. Oh, I, I don't blame you. So blame I'm, you. I'm over it. I'm not sitting in a freaking grass or an open field or or a parking lot or uh, you know, the side of a curb fixing something big anymore. I'm just not doing it. It has to be at my shop. Yep. So the other thing I added in on that, got them in at the same time. New Eliminate version three. Woo! I don't have one of With, those. We are giving one of those away though in the raffle. And a yeah, Yost XL. One of going away. And it's worth it. it's worth buying in just to try to get that version three. That suction cup, the new auto suction cup, flip the little switch. Boop. Beep. Beep. Now that you mentioned that, now that was designed by him. What? Th- that, that suction cup. The suction cup on his version three light? Okay. Yeah. yeah that's that is designed not, by him. That is so not the a, first uh, inter- industry designed suction cup. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, everything else was designed for glass. Well, I'll, I'll throw this out there right away. This is my first mini light. Really? Really? Okay. Well, yep. you're a hail guy. You don't really need a, a well. Exactly. But these I cars, disagree. I disagree. So, you well, know, when I'm working this hail car that I'm working on now, the wicked I, curves. I I'll throw that thing up for rails. I was using it on the rails just because it was just faster and easier to set up for rails. For me, where I'm getting is the uh, the wicked curves. Like uh, when I finally got to use it on was a GMC train. The back of the wheel flare on the front fender. Mm-hmm. So that's such a tight spot. It's about four or five inches deep total. But to get a three foot hail light, all my 36 inch hail lights, you know, uh, there's times I've taken my big hail lights apart and set the head down on the floor and propped it up to get it in the right position to see those. Well, man, the mini light, it just falls right into place. You know, the mini lights, it's, it's your go-to for just cross-checking ease of use and tight spaces and just sometimes just way more convenient. You, you go, Oh, my lights on the other side of the car and I've got all this stuff on the ground and you're like, Oh, mini lights right there. Boom. Throw it on there. And you, you flip the switch and you slap it onto the surface and it goes zoop, and it's stuck. It's over. And then I'm the only one that don't have one. And you adjust the, the <laughs> sucker. You adjust the, the, the lens to what level you like. And you got yeah. the exact fog you like. So there's not, hey, this is the fog you're getting and you better like it. In fact, 
I'm finishing up a little bit of drywall work and I'm, I'm inside <laughs> of a, a little, so I brought that sucker home. I'm going to, I'm going to wet wipe my uh, wall uh, off. And that thing will stick right to the camping, the camping, <laughs> oh. camping. I bring my mini, I bring my, my, my lights with me camping How funny. every time. You know, now that you said that I used, uh, <laughs> I used the umbrella. I had to clean out my, my sink the other day, right. For the clean out. We had a clog yeah. in my kitchen sink, so I went to the clean out. And I'm like, damn, it's hot in this driveway. I grab my umbrella, stick it to the window right above it. I'm working <laughs> in luxury, snaking out my, my, my drain. Yeah. Now, my uh, neighbor's like, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> get a grip, doctor. Dude, if you get, if get, you a, get a flat tire and you got that mini light in your truck, oh, yeah, you're going to love it. Oh, yeah. 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 You're like, yeah. slap it on there. Got plenty of light. <laughs> Hours of runtime. Yeah, yeah, a six hundred dollar awesome light to uh, change a flat tire. Worth hey. every penny. Yes, safety first, people. Safety, safety first. <laughs> Be seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. All right. Well, we got a couple more things that we got to talk about because there are some shows coming up, and then we're like, going to let you guys go and uh, get on the raffle and What's buy some up? tickets. We got a whole bunch of stuff. There's like show after show after show coming up. It, it's like show season. You know, uh, yes. front range. Well, first of all, we're all going to SEMA. I don't know about John. You're going, right? Nope, not to SEMA. Okay. I will not be in SEMA because I'm turning around and I'm headed out to the Mega Media in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, that's right. You got you got Mega Media. Okay, I so. got Mega Media, and then I turn around and go to Front Range in Denver. And that's what I'm getting to. I'll meet you there, brother. Yep. So What's Front Range. Front. You, really? Man, <sighs> Front Range. Front Range is Anson Roberts company they're in denver colorado they are co-hosting along with anson pdr tools yes and then that's going to be on um november nope. 3rd and 4th yes. correct november 3rd and 4th and possibly 5th and 6th and 7th and 8th if we get a, a bunch of people Enough wanting to people. do the ev training we will extend it so tools and open house for Anson are all going to be on the third. Yes, a tech meetup. The IMI training that Vince himself is going to be teaching starts on the fourth and will continue on if there's more people to yes. go on to it. So. Definitely we have the fourth and fifth, which would be the Sunday and Monday. So for those of you that work during the week, you could do it on Sunday. And for those of you that don't want to work on the weekends, uh, you'll be coming in on Monday. So uh, you could go to AnsonPDR.com to sign up for the EV class, and we encourage every single one of you to do that. Two out of the three of us have done it, and I believe John might be staying on to do it on Sunday, hopefully. Uh, I'll see. I have to get back here to Rapid City, South Dakota. I have a doctor's appointment at 8 o'clock Monday morning. Oh, okay. So, so if, if you guys don't think you need the, the EV training, I – will strongly encourage you will as soon as you work on a model s a tesla model s like i did today and i had to take out the tail light mm -hmm. and the charging port is in the tail light and you're working with uh how many volts is that vince back there i believe it's 200 volts dc and that's enough to do what to you kill you kill you, kill you. it so, will kill you it, yeah. It, there's no unless someone is there to push you off, you will attach to that electric. Well, no. If they push you off, they're going to get locked on to you, well, and they will die as well. Exactly. That's if they don't have. You, a, you have to have a safety hook, a yeah. plastic safety hook. That or proper PPE, which is personal protection equipment like rubber gloves. Yeah. So, yeah, just to take out a tail light. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. So. So you look wear. into that training. Sign up for it at AnsonPDR.com. Yep. It's under and training at the top. You could click on that. I will and be, the front, I will be front teach range meetup. Yeah. Sorry. We're talking about top of each other. I'm throwing it out. Uh, hold it on. All right. It's 1448 West Cedar Avenue, Denver, Colorado. Yeah. So that's Saturday, the tech meetup. And everyone should go to that if you're in the neighborhood because... You know, Wade is now part of Front Range. He moved from Houston, Texas, and is now teamed up with Anson Roberts on his team there at Front Range. Uh, he's a blast to hang out with. Uh, you know, Kevin Andrews is coming from England to teach the class with me. Uh, I will be 
leaving for jolly old England over Thanksgiving to actually get certified as an instructor for IMI. But internally, I will be uh, under the direction of Kevin Andrews from TDN. He will be having his watchful English eye and ruler on me, whacking me in the back of the head as I <laughs> make mistakes. <laughs> Saying, eat the pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat. Got to eat the meat. Do you have your pudding? No, it'll be really good. And and check it out. Do get that certification. Um, yeah. I, I will get the certification. I will be in the right spot where I finally get to be able to you get You will, that. John. We'll, we'll corner you down and get you. That's right. Uh, you, Luckily, I get to hang out with all you guys, and I get all the knowledge. Right. So we have also the PDR World Cup. That's coming up in December. Keep a lookout for that. There are Christmas parties going on all over. This is the first time. This is something that Ryan Hampton has also put together where there's going to be a worldwide Christmas party on December 8th. And it's a, basically a toy drive and tech meetup that everyone... Uh, everyone now, this if, is... I, I only caught a little wind of this, so I'm, I'm catching up on new. this one. It's is new. This what, okay, is this what the dents for kids that Ryan's been doing for a couple of years has morphed into now? They're going to do the Christmas party? Yeah, well, uh, dents for kids started with John Hiley out of Ohio. And, okay. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if John's doing it or not, and there has been little to no buzz about it. I'm sure John will be doing something because he's a very giving guy himself. Uh, but it, uh, Ryan Hampton had this wonderful idea that we could do something. Because what ends up happening is that the outside people really don't come to it. And then if they do come, it was like dents for kids. They would come with these train wrecks or dents that couldn't really be fixed. So his philosophy, I believe, and I'm just I'm going by what I've read. I, I don't know this firsthand uh, with talking to Ryan, but he's he's making it. The, the biggest givers are the Denk people. So they come and they they give toys and they give money, and then you go out and buy toys for the kids. And it's basically a toys for tots type of thing. Uh, and all the proceeds will go to uh, you know t- toy banks that need toys for kids. So there's going to be one in England at TDN. There's one in Australia. Uh, Doug Hillius up in Seattle. Uh, uh, Crystal Ellison in Minnesota. They're 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 going to be all yeah, over the Minnesota, country. Minnesota, eh? Minnesota, and also I think Crystal's in Michigan. I'm sorry, she's in Michigan. I'm thinking <laughs> Do- Michigan, eh? Don Cavanaugh. He's in Minnesota. Uh, there right? you go. Yes, Don. Yeah, okay, Don's going to have one. He's so, a hoser, eh? Yeah. No, that's Canada, man. Come on. <laughs> so there's all these. It's called the the. I don't even know what it's called. It's going to be a Christmas party. It's going to be the PDR Christmas party. It's going to be all over the place. It's pretty cool. Right. And we just skipped right over Halloween, didn't we? Well, Halloween will be in uh, what do you call it? SEMA. We'll, we'll be in you guys SEMA. Will be at SEMA in Halloween. Yeah, the day after. Yeah. yeah, and un- unfortunately, I th- I believe that the World Cup, the PDR World Cup, will be going on the same weekend as these uh, these Christmas parties. So if you can't make it to the World Cup, if it's n- just not feasible for you, and you're going to have one of these Christmas parties in your neighborhood, you might as well go and meet some other guys as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And if you guys are going to SEMA, hit us up. Let us know. Oh, there's and, a lot uh, that have it already. Yeah, um, I'm taking I'm taking a group of guys to a, a tiki bar for sure. <laughs> so if you haven't uh, been to a tiki bar with Daniel Grom, you're gonna not want to miss that one. It's like going to Disneyland on steroids. Yeah, Disneyland with alcohol. So excited! <laughs> Everybody gets a ride. Yeah, <laughs> come here, little 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 John Renstrom. Come sit on Dan- Uncle Daniel Grom's lap. We'll give you a ride. Now you're getting we weird. can talk about what pops up. Now you're getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are weirdos. All right. All right. I think so that brings us to a close. It does. Like said. That was a jam-packed episode, man. We guys we didn't stop talking at all, did we? No. no. So lots of stuff. Uh, I want to close by just saying peace, love, and the perfect Mai Tai. And don't do stupid stuff. And I still gotta come up with something. No, no, you're supposed to say level up your tools. Level up your tools, damn it. This has been another episode of PBR Tool Time.